Welcome to FinScale, a podcast created by Solen Niederkorn, shedding light on innovation in finance, banking, and insurance. Episode 200, Just You and Me. In this episode, you'll hear only me. We've hit 200 episodes, but to be honest, there are more because we've also recorded about 20 specials. It was important to me to mark this milestone. When I launched this podcast, FinScale, my goal was neither fame nor monetization, but rather I had a hunger to shed light on so many amazing initiatives in the world of finance, a desire to learn and meet inspiring people and also to inspire others. I wanted to share this with my ecosystem, which is now our ecosystem. And the idea was and always has been to demystify complexities by unpicking the most intricate parts of an industry that I've also been part of for 20 years. During these three years, almost four, I've had the privilege of meeting nearly 200 experts in the field, immersing myself in topics as varied as private equity, venture capital, banking, payment systems, CFO stack trends and crypto, and many other subjects. This 200th episode is not just a celebration, but rather a retrospective, a look back at the significant trends, collaborations, and especially the skills and the exceptional entrepreneurs I've had the chance to meet. With my equipment and unwavering determination and passion, each week I delivered a new episode. In this episode, I'll speak about how I got started, the soft skills I rediscovered, the trends I've followed, and what more I've learned about entrepreneurship. So for this 200th episode, expect a journey through time, a deep dive into what FinScale has uncovered, shared, and celebrated. I'm so eager to share this with you. Thank you to everyone for joining me on this adventure. And I hope you enjoy this special episode of FinScale. As I ask every week, please rate this episode on the podcast platform, such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts. It's a great way for me to get feedback. Go gentle on me. It's a, a lot harder being the only person on the mic. Enjoy the show. For... Uh, Those who've been listening for me for three years, I do realize that many don't really know who I am and what I do. So I, let me quickly introduce myself. So I'm married. I have four children. I'm living in Luxembourg. I would say I live in Luxembourg, but I'm a lot of my time in Switzerland and France. And I love mountains. I love uh, mountaineering, trekking, and of course, do trail running. I've been working in finance for 20 years. I started my career at UBS as portfolio manager before joining the Swiss group Lombardier, where I contributed to a major European projects, regulatory projects for most of them. And um, I also founded a tech business in 2015, uh, just after, after giving birth, um, like the same day I gave birth and then I went to the notary to sign the, the paper for the creation of my company. And, um, but actually the, um, the venture didn't go as I planned, unfortunately, but it allowed me to work, uh, afterwards in a startup. I've been working for two years in a rec tech company and, um, I wanted to understand how these uh, small co companies operate. So I did this and, um, uh, today I'm fully independent. Actually, I wear several hats. Uh, let me summarize what I do, uh, because, um, that could last hours. So um, I have um, board um, uh, positions in uh, funds uh, or companies. I also advise a startup and, and um, scale up in the fintech area, of course, in building uh, regulated entities such as uh, AIFM, credit institution or investment firms or in, in payment institution. I take a little bit of my time to uh, also teach um, at HEC School of Management in, um, in Paris, so in France. Of course, I host um, the FinScale podcast, but I would say I try to restrict myself and um, have less than 20% of my time allocated to uh, FinScale. Otherwise, it would be too um, time-consuming. Beyond all of this, I would say I'm a human and I love people and creating uh, connections and impact. So how it all started? Actually, the, the beginning of my journey, the very beginning of my journey was a discussion with um, quite a famous podcaster in France called Mathieu Stéphanie, who became a friend now. 
And um, actually, I just had a quick coffee with him to understand what was he doing, uh, all his um, motivations. And then we talk and uh, I really felt inspired by what he told me. And um, when I decided to launch the podcast was when I came back from this uh, cafe in uh, the train from Paris to Luxembourg. And then I said to myself, wow, what he does is really, really, really interesting. And I think this is something I can do. So I came back at home and I, actually I decided to launch it. And then within a week I had, of course, uh, the mic. I had all the needed uh, equipment to record in um, amidst the hustle and bustle of the Paris metro, for instance. And um, I had the idea, like in a, an evening, I decided to concentrate on innovation and change in my industry because uh, I've been working years in finance. And um, yeah, I wanted to capture the essence of the rapid evolution of finance and technology. For the team, I chose a studio module, which is a great studio based in Paris. And uh, Morgan Prudhomme, who is my great engineer, has become such a precious contact for me. I guess he's the person I'm the most in contact with on, on WhatsApp. <laughs> And uh, feel free to reach uh, him on my behalf if you need to launch a podcast or even uh, some videos. He's a great, also a specialist in uh, video. And um, yeah, and for English, I decided to take um, a proofreader because my English is, I would say, continental English. I don't know if we can say that, but I wanted uh, the level of a, a British speaker. So I took a British speaker to help me. And um, to add a discreet British nuance to my output. Regarding the um, newsletter platform, I decided easily Substack. Substack is quite used by content creators. I was very, I'm very happy. I still remain very happy with, um, with Substack. And for the visual, I created the, the visual on, on Canva. I guess it took me like 30 minutes. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Uh, yes, but it, it's the effective approach to establishing a, an attractive visual identity, I guess the most efficient. And uh, yeah, and in the beginning, I wrote uh, dozens of cold emails in the beginning, like so many of us. And at first, nobody knew about Finskia. And uh, in a way, that hasn't changed so much because when it comes to coverage, a uh, new countries. Um, actually, uh, nobody knows me in the US, so I have to struggle to get um, great uh, guests on my podcast um, based in the US, but it's, it's great. Um, um, it's great doing this. And uh, regarding the anecdotes, it's funny because I recorded in very, very strange or places or, um, yeah, I recorded uh, on vacation, during travels, in restaurants, beside a pool, returning from skiing, in noisy cafe on the street, at even, even on a porch or by the sea, and in places sometimes comfortable, but sometimes not at all. And uh, yes, and when I record English episode, sometimes I have to record very late at night when, it can, when, when it's a Californian-based uh, guest, I have to record at midnight, but it's okay. <laughs> Regarding writing, I wrote to you from Athens uh, airport at 4 a.m. in the morning in, uh, from the depths of Norway, New York and Chicago and on many, many car rides. My, my children know that because I, I always have my computer on my, um, on my knees and working with my, um, yes, my bows on my ears. And uh, yes, that's the way I work. And, and that's the only way for me to keep this uh, 20% uh, amount of my time dedicated to my podcast and not to pollute the other activities that I'm doing. And I, yeah, it's never happened that I, my email on Sunday morning didn't go out. Yeah, first I wanted to give you uh, some content. So Fenske was launched in May 2020 and uh, I've released... One to two episodes a week uh, ever since. In total, that makes 220 episodes. And I've had the immense pleasure of speaking with heavy weights from insurance, banking, investing, and everything in between when it comes to the world of fintech. It's been incredible. And um, I wouldn't have believed that FinScale would have hundreds of thousands of listeners, to be honest. So it remains a very niche podcast uh, in the vast world of podcasts with, I would say, a French-speaking uh, audience mainly. 
And uh, yeah, and guess what? Finske often ranks in the top business podcast on Apple Podcast France, which is great. I'm very happy about that. And last figure, yeah, 220 newsletters have been sent out and uh, 100 in, in English. And more or less the same for the number of LinkedIn posts, which is, yeah, quite amazing. And uh, yeah, and among the companies I've been uh, spotlighted on my show, some have taken off uh, or been acquired. Others uh, sadly said goodbye. That happens. And um, yes, and a few simply chose to close shop. Content-wise, uh, we have a nice mix. So I did the calculation. 45% of my episode treated fintech subject. So when I say fintech, it's intertech, fontech, regtech, etc. 12% um, dived into the world of Web3, crypto, blockchain, 20% about investment. When I say investment, it's uh, PVC, etc. And um, yes, yeah, 7% only are devoted to impact. I tried to improve that number. I did a um, much more uh, episode on impact investing and uh, finance. Yeah, sustainability in finance um, this year, but it, it has to improve. And uh, yes, and not to mention the 10% that go to somewhat more traditional players. Um, I have had the privilege of having discussions with uh, some of the biggest names in finance, like uh, Visa, Euronext, the European Investment Fund, uh, BP France, Amundi, Pictet, Rothschild & Co., BNP, BNP Paribas. And um, that's without counting exchanges I've had with the likes of France Fintech or the European Payments Association, um, the Payment Association in EU. Yes, it's impossible for me to mention them all, but I've discovered a tremendous mix of fintech coming from Belgium, Switzerland, the UK, Spain, Germany, Austria, Finland, etc. And even in the US. It's a sort of a podcast world tour, I would say. And when it comes to asset managers, uh, I've touched... Uh, on everything from the equity market, uh, stocks or fixed income side, um, to um, enlisted. And that's the one I favor the most, personally, uh, alternative investments. Uh, so I've looked into private debt, P, impact investing, securitization, and uh, even VC and growth. And it's funny because when people tell me that I've seen it all, uh, I can help but laugh because the world of finance is such a vast ocean. There is so much more that I want to explore. I wanted to touch on soft skills. Uh, I covered this the least in my episode, but it's fundamental. And when it comes to business, it's, uh, it carries massive cloud in the financial sector. So let me share a few examples that I've learned during my time doing the, uh, the FinScale podcast. So the number one is uh, the ability to adapt, the agility. And um, yeah, we all know that when you develop a product, you need to meet a market, you need to meet a, a given need. In an industry where regulation change uh, frequently, entrepreneurs need to adapt quickly and be uh, ready to evolve. I was amazed by one of my guests, which is in the French audio, it's um, a very successful entrepreneur called Anne Tuchong. She's the number one, the first employee of Conto. And uh, she created and founded Lago. So I recorded an episode with her. And we had to make a complete, she, sorry, she had to make with her team a complete pivot. And she perfectly describes the way it happened. And it's amazing the way that the team reacted and um, behaved in that very stressing part of their journey. I also covered this in also in my French audio with Adina Gregorio. She's the founder of Active Asset Allegation. And um, she discussed how the offer they're offering evolved to see the, in the, the insurance industry. And she perfectly illustrates this uh, agility point. The number two that I have in mind is quite standard. I would say it's mainstream, but it's still of utmost importance. It's leadership. It's the agility of uh, entrepreneurs that have met in guiding their teams through uh, significant milestones and various stages of company growth. And that has, that has been remarkable in some cases. Yeah, when you consider the success of companies like Alma, Conto, Mongo Perla, and Ledger, or Checkout.com, yeah, leadership often entails making difficult decisions and 
most importantly, owning the results. And it's a trait that I've consistently observed in many of the entrepreneurs that I've encountered. And why I mentioned these examples, the truth is I could mention many more from those I met on FinScale and in my professional engagements. Number three is emotional intelligence. So emotional intelligence is um, something that I'm also digging uh, at a personal level. I find it so interesting and so, I mean, center in our relationship uh, with each other. And um, yes, it's the ability to understand and regulate one's emotions and to know and interpret the emotions of others. Yes, it's truly a special skill that really helps uh, to create a positive corporate culture, manage stress, and more importantly, to negotiate effectively in an often pressure in an, a business environment that is a lot under pressure. A prime example of this in this uh, the episode that I have uh, recorded is um, two uh, founder and, and partners of a um, VC fund called uh, Teampact. It's very interesting because what Timpak is building is um, actually they try to instill companies with the essence of sportsmanship, instill the, the values of sports uh, in the companies they invest in. Very interesting. The number four of the soft skills that I have identif identified is communication. And it takes a lot of work, and especially for startups that develop businesses in, on complex technologies or daunting regulations. I have in mind a few of them, like, for instance, a force line or um, episode that I had um, on open banking, such as a true layer, where it's, it's becoming and it, the, the um, communication becomes very, very complicated. Uh, subjects uh, are very complex and the way those entrepreneurs manage uh, it is quite amazing. So I, yeah, let's just, uh, I really encourage you to listen to these uh, two episodes, but many, many others, I, I would say. I had, yeah, I remember um, the one that I recorded with um, the founder uh, of uh, ETC Group. Yeah, trying to explain to somebody who is not aware of what an ETP is, how they managed to launch ETP product in, in the domain of crypto was a very complex exercise. And Bradley, Duke, the CEO, perfect perfectly uh, explained that to us. Congrats to you, uh, Bradley, if you listen. There are those who have left their mark because they have tackled the north face of the mountains and they showed courage, perseverance. They dive directly in building complex structures. So um, I was thinking of Taylor. So uh, Taylor is an... Is, uh, I, I re received a CEO of Taylor, uh, Patrick Schreibler, and um, he explains to us how they manage to uh, lend to corporates. And uh, what is interesting is uh, the way they created their securitization vehicle in Luxembourg. It's very inspiring, but it's not, it's not easy at all what they did. <laughs> so it's quite amazing. And yeah, it requires, this demands, uh, requires, this demands incredible patience from both the entrepreneurs and their investors. Among the recipes for creating miracles, I've noticed a common thread, which is the cultivation of a strong corporate culture. This is evident in companies like uh, Penny Lane, which is uh, initially based in France. And um, yeah, a significant part of their success to the foundation laid by their company culture, in my opinion. Second element that I have um, noticed is um, yeah, giving meaning to one's business. If I think of an episode that has truly left its mark on me, it's definitely the one I had with Sweep. It's a startup that is based in France and takes its mission very seriously. It's not about just offering a service. You can really get a sense of their vision with the CEO. Her name is Rachel Delacour. And she articulates and advances a vision that gives meaning uh, to the company. There is a real purpose and uh, we can feel that it has galvanized all the employees and um, to unit behind one common objective, which is uh, sustainability. It's quite amazing. The third point that I have um, also in mind is uh, valuing diversity. Um, there are a lot of initiatives in financial industry that try to highlight the importance of diversity and inclusion. I'm thinking specifically 
about uh, Ladies Bank, which has an initiative launched by uh, Odo BHF and uh, Sista Fund. And those two initiatives confirm that diversity is not just a representation issue and uh, a real driver of innovation and performance. There are, of course, many other ingredients <laughs> that I should have included, uh, like a strong management team, adaptability of the business model, clear and uh, evolving business model, governance Governance is so important. A governance that is adapted to the stage of the company. A board that is adapted to the, the stage of the company. Of course, the international office culture, strategic and well-executed networking, along with, yes, important, very important partnerships that are both sensible and swift to establish, are also critical components. One of the topics that I have really enjoyed seeing emerge is um, that of sustainable finance. Moving beyond the stereotypes, I've uncovered true gems and teams fully committed to the cause like Satgana, Carbon Equity, Mirova, Kimpa, Ring Capital, Impact Partners or Stripe. This is one of the major fintech themes that fascinates me and I can share this, but it might end up <laughs> being too long. All that as a service topics as well, like lending as a service, payment as a service, of course, um, banking as a service, rent to own, uh, revenue based financing, buy an Apple letter, reverse buy an Apple letter, and of course, wealth tech. I've been working in the um, uh, wealth area for 13 years, so I'm very sensitive to wealth tech and notably Itoro, Scalable Capital, and Finari. I love discovering more about Web3, crypto, and blockchain, whether it's through tokenization or wealth tech. And I really enjoyed the discussion I had with some of the, the advanced players in, uh, in the game. And in total, I guess if I remember correctly, more or less like 20 episodes dealing with this. A recurring team I have encountered is the CFO stack. I've discovered a plethora of solutions in areas such as cash management, be payment, accounting and beyond. Yeah, I must admit that I did deviate a little bit. <laughs> I ventured beyond finance to delve into the world of startup studio. It's still within the, the, realm, the realm of investment, but I really enjoyed my discussion with Quentin uh, Mans from EXA, Patrick Amiel from 321 Founded, and Camille Tian uh, from Logic Founders. And um, yeah, it's a model that makes sense. That's exciting and that has given birth to amazing company. Very beautiful companies indeed. And uh, yeah, by now you must know my bias towards regulation, whether it's a sanction screening or an importance of KYC. There is no way I could miss out on these topics. And uh, yeah, driven by my curiosity, I explored topics slightly of the beaten track. The episode of the film on the film financing and discussion about the needs of institutional investors with Hexagon Finance was particularly fascinating for me. So here we are. That's the end of the episode. It's a huge milestone in the journey of Finskia. Before concluding, I wanted to express my gratitude to you, dear listeners. Your loyalty and commitments throughout these uh, four years have been so precious and a very source of inspiration and, and motivation. So it's thanks to your listening, your sharing and your comments that Finskia has become what it is today. If I look to the future, my next steps would be to continue to explore the world of finance, its progress, to dive even deeper into trends, to unveil the secrets of new technologies, and of course, to introduce you to entrepreneurs and players in finance who work to transform the industry. All of this with you all having at a front row seat. Our journey together is only just beginning. Finally, I'd like to extend a special invitation to each one of you. Your voices and experience are vital in deepening our collective insight. So I encourage you to share your lessons learned, your reflections, your feedback on the discoveries you've made with Finscale. You know, your stories, your successes and your challenges enrich this dialogue and this community. You can write to me, you can leave me comments on LinkedIn and comment on the podcast, on your platforms. You know, every contribution counts for me. Thank you again for your loyalty and shared passion. I'll see you for the next episode of Finscale. Until then, keep exploring, learning, and above all, sharing. I send you my warmest regards and heartfelt thanks. Ciao. 
Thank you all for listening and sharing this moment with us. Don't hesitate to contact me on Twitter or LinkedIn to share your comments and reactions. You can also rate this episode on your favorite podcast platform. See you soon. <laughs>